Now to community spirit of a very different nature. Locals featured in the reality TV show Struggle Street and some big-hearted volunteers have joined forces to make their suburb a better place. SBS exposed the area's problems and fears during the series, then moved on. Now take a look at this. Without places like this, there would be so many more lives that would be on the edge. You don't know how much it means. It does bring a lump in your throat. It's the backbone of every suburb in Australia. The local community centre that offers vital services and support for people doing it tough. Bailey's come to live with me. I think you're fantastic for taking her in. No, really, it's not easy. You've got a little one. We were first introduced to Grassini's Cottage in the controversial documentary Struggle Street. We have activities for the seniors. We have a gym opened up. We have the IT room, which is all ages as well, which is free internet to the community if they need help with um, Centrelink forms. It could be anything, phone calls. We go to court with them, um, take them to appointments. The heart of this centre is a Vanka Pelican. It is extremely hard, as in, you know, you get people coming up and going, do you have any food? And they don't care if it's a can of baked beans. For the locals out here in Western Sydney, life can be far from easy, which is why they often rely on support from places like here at Grassidi's Cottage. And now after years of offering that helping hand, the community has come together to give back. People turn up here, whether they are in trouble with their mum and dad, whether they're in trouble with the law, whether they're in trouble at school, whatever strife is going on in their life. Now this centre that has helped so many needs some help of its own. Over the years the cottage has become run down. There's holes in the flooring, leaking windows, broken air conditioners and flooding inside parts of the gym and cottage due to ongoing drainage problems. Now that's all about to change. Without places like this there would be so many more lives that would be on the edge or over the edge. When TV host and 2GB radio presenter Ben Fordham saw just how tough Ivanka and her team were doing it, he wanted to help. You know, I was heartbroken watching the second episode of it. There was so much sadness around, but then amongst it all was this lady, Ivanka, who just seemed to be a shining light. So Ben rallied his listeners, calling out on his show for tradies to get involved in a makeover. And the response was amazing. You've got people from north, south, east and west, some of whom are doing four hour round trips just to be here. Taxi drivers who've given up a, a shift for the day just so they can be here. People who brought their kids along to watch. Generous volunteers. We just want to get involved, give a bit back. Of all ages. Has Dad done a good job? No. <laughs> no! <laughs> and locals, including a few familiar faces, pitching in and giving up their time for free. I wouldn't even know where to start, how to thank them. Here's the plan, paint the outside of the building and install a new kitchen complete with brand new appliances. The old air conditioners, blinds and leaking windows will be replaced, while new cabinets will be added for storage. Upstairs there'll also be more lighting installed, flooring and two new computers, while outside a trench is being built and new concrete laid to fix those drainage problems, while the boundary line is being extended and new gardens added. Worth around $100,000, these volunteers will have just a few days to complete the work. We'll get it done, definitely get it done. Well, we're doing a slab here at the, at the back of the, the cottage and we're doing the footpath at the front of the, co uh, the cottage. Paul Breen is the owner of Productivity Boot Camp, a construction business that gives local youths on-the-job training to get them into the workforce. They just graduated there yesterday, ready to hit the workforce now and uh, you could say this is their first job. And he says he couldn't be prouder. There's one thing I've learned is never judge a book by its cover because uh, all these young fellas need is a break. For workers like Edward and Dylan, it's a program that's been life-changing. If I didn't have a job, I know for sure that I'd be out there, you know, doing stupid stuff, you know, like reckless stuff that, I'll, you know, that'll get me into crime and stuff. My uh, view on life used to be that I was just going to be floating between Centrelink and a job for the rest of my life. And for the first time, I actually feel like I've, uh, I've got a chance of life. Also lending a hand are Amar Singh and the team from Turbans for Australia. We put in three new split system air conditioners in. Um, it's cost about $6,000. 
The extra gift purchased with donations raised by the Sikh community. This is unbelievable. No. One person who knows just how important community is out here is Mark Geyer. I feel proud. I feel proud that I come from this area. Born and bred in nearby Wayland, the footy star grew up in Housing Commission and says these suburbs are more than what was recently shown during the controversial documentary. I was kind of outraged because it kind of put the kids back five or six years as far as credibility goes. We're all human, we've all got two legs, two arms, two eyes, we, we have heartache, we have anguish. But most importantly, we've got, we've got a really good spirit. Back inside and the Sparkies are busy installing new down lights. I feel blessed that I'm able to put forward something and being able to offer a bit of you know, assistance to the area and the community. By giving a bit to the area, hopefully they might be able to uh, appreciate what we've done, but also give the kids an impetus to actually um, maybe tag along and do some work. Upstairs, the new computers are being installed while those leaky windows are finally getting replaced. Outside, new concrete has been laid and the guttering is going in. The cottage has had problems with water running into the garage, front and back. So all we're doing here today is, is trying to get rid of that water and moving it down to the stormwater drains. Yep. So excited, no more flooding in the office, no more wet carpet. With plenty still to do, Ben and Mark one. are getting their hands dirty. Guys, give him a shovel. <laughs> you got any gloves? Oh, no. Soft hands. Look, you're the working man's soft, hero. Soft hands, mate, soft hands. From helping on site to cooking up a snack, the entire community has come out in force. It blows me away sometimes. In, you know, we always hear so much doom and gloom, but something like this makes your, makes your heart you know, really beat. It's been a huge couple of days, but the work is finally done. We've been given a fridge, like cupboard space out here, a dishwasher, for extra computers, the window's been fixed to Wayne Lee. One of the best things is my office is not going to flood anymore. The new concrete's been laid, which is going to be amazing for the guys in the gym. We've got this extra room now, which is just unbelievable. So happy that you've all worked so hard. And to see you all come here and do something for the community, you just don't understand how overwhelmed I am. What a great effort. And if you'd like to support that community centre, the details are on our website.